The views expressed on the Ward and Bradley show are not necessarily those held by the hosts, Ward and Bradley, nor those of the proprietors of the website, wardandbradley.com. Let's make some magic. Hello, it is magic time. Welcome once again to the Warner Bradley Show. I'm one of your hosts, Bradley Victor. I'm the other host, Warren Van. It's currently 65 degrees and cloudy in Bellingham, Washington. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I just looked at the weather. It is cloudy, I know. And it's refreshingly cool, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm refreshed by the coolness because this week it's been so fucking hell hot and I have to work outside and I've sweated probably like 20 pounds of weight off of me. <laughs> well, probably not. I wouldn't exist if I had sweated that much weight off. But So I was looking forward to a little cool down. But not on the weekends when I want to go, you want to go swimming. swimming. Yeah, it's my whole uh, raison d'être. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. Fucking pretentious asshole. Because um, <laughs> I haven't had a car lately, and I finally got a vehicle again now. I'm like, all right, now I'm going to go to the lake. I'm going to hang out, get my amphibian boy plans off the ground, which were dashed a few weeks ago. And now, of course, as soon as I have a vehicle, the weather turns to shit. But weather cloudy, sixty-five oh, yeah. degrees. I, I mean, it's nice. I find it kind of. I'm feeling good. I slept longer this morning than yeah. I have been recently because the heat by the sun. The sun beats down on me, and also I have a hard time sleeping when it's so hot. Oh yeah, because you live in that weird greenhouse, basically. My bedroom is sort of like just sort of attached. It's like a shack to the side of the yeah. house, so it's not insulated or anything. <laughs> it just has a bunch of windows, so it gets extremely cold during the winter and extremely hot during yeah. the summer. So it can be a little bit of a problem because it starts getting really hot really early as soon as the sun comes up. It's one thing that LA taught me is that heat is the absolute worst when you're trying to sleep because you'll you'll have trouble falling asleep because you're all sweaty and gross but then once you do fall asleep it's like you're in a coma some weird heat yeah. coma and you can't wake up you're just all groggy and fucked get, up. Your sleep isn't that deep usually. No. Yeah. Uh, I've been in a little better mood lately because I now have a vehicle again. You do. Um, the disposition has turned a little sunny as the weather's turned gray. There's been all these interactions, and it's interesting to see my how my demeanor has changed and the way I deal with things as opposed to when I'm in a bad mood. For instance, uh, yesterday I had two separate social interactions, and it it's kind of highlights how I don't behave normally perhaps compared to other people yeah uh because i ran into this one guy who i vehemently dislike oh um, and they're not a lot of people who i really yeah. really really dislike and i won't say i hate anybody i don't think i'll ever go that far yeah but it's just it's this fucking dick and there was all these this history in the past of bullshit that he pulled and everything and he's just kind of the sleazy weaselly little fucker <laughs> and uh, i won't mention any names but um, we had a falling out where he did something that I did not approve of yeah. uh, several years ago, and I called him on it. And so I saw him the other day, or yesterday, and he kind of, he was walking towards me, and he sort of went, oh, when he saw me. And I just looked at him, and he came up and tried to give me this, hey, hey what's going on? Hey, it's been a long time. No, don't bother. He's like, what? What do you mean? It's like, I thought I explained to you perfectly well that I want nothing to do with you. Why should I pretend to be cool with you when I'm not? Why yeah. should I subject myself to this ridiculous, inane, fake social interaction with you? Just go away. Yeah. I don't need to talk to you. And he, of course, was just like nonplussed. And I went do to do and walked on my he way. He seemed to just blow over eventually, yeah. maybe. But and. It's not like I'm holding a grudge, but why bother pretending? Yeah. You know? It's, I'm just sick of that. Doesn't and it, serve any purpose. And, and for I you. wasn't angry at him. No. I, I just explained to him the way it is. I was perfectly fine with it. And yeah, I was in a fine mood and I wandered off. And then a little bit later, I was in the bagelry again. And I ran into this girl who very attractive and i went out with her once and it was that thing we discussed before i think in one of our that's how women are segments where you know the whole like <laughs> hey this is great we're having a great time yeah. and then you're like all right well let's hang out again and they're like oh yes of course and then even like make plans sort of yeah to hang out again and then of course you do the whole hey so let's let's do that thing yeah. we mentioned and then they never 
call you back or respond to the messages. And so, of course, in her mind, that was probably this horribly awkward thing. She felt like she was going to be treated the way you treated the other guy, probably. Maybe. Yeah. So she probably ascribed to me a certain amount of embarrassment. And and of course, like I would have probably liked to see her again, but it's not yeah. the end of the world kind of thing. And if, if someone behaves in that way, my response, which, again, I don't think is normal, is to be overly friendly and gregarious. Yes. And maybe it's in a kind of spiteful way. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. We're just trying to compensate for it. Yeah, your but it's almost like I'm trying to rub their nose in it or something. But the other thing even is you're it. taking all the power away from them because yeah. they think they've done something to you and they think you should feel bad about it. You're right. Like, you didn't do anything to me. Right. I'm fine. Brad's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really. But no, I ran into her and she kind of saw me and again yeah. like gave me that <gasps> look. Like, oh no, what's going to happen? Is it going to be awkward? And I'm just like, hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, this weather. And like talking and just completely being way more charming than I normally am. Yeah. And she she was just completely confused and nonplussed. It's like, hey, you take care. And then I went and got my bagel. When I'm in a good mood, I'm able to manipulate social interactions way better than I'm not completely held captive by my own angst all yes. the time, you know? Yeah, so it's. I think I can, I'm capable of using social interactions as almost a sort of anthropological study to just see how people react to certain things, and I'm not affected by it in any way. That's kind of cool. You're a little bit more detached. Yeah. Yeah, not so angry. Detached is good. Yeah. Uh, I was also pissed off today because I tried to go to the grocery store, and I keep forgetting this bullshit. In Bellingham, we have passed a paper bag, or no, a plastic bag ban. Yes. In Bellingham, because... I don't know why. I don't know why a city government can force businesses not to provide something for customers. How does that have anything to do with government? Saving the earth. How can you tell private businesses you can't give people plastic bags? It's ridiculous. It's the, the earth is going to be saved. Uh, now. Yes, of course. All these baby seals who are choking <laughs> on plastic bags and turtles who are swallowing them. No, I, I think it's, it's the fact that they're using petroleum to make them, right? Isn't that what makes people I angry? I don't know. I thought it was more about Cause they're floating otters getting killing, trapped inside them animals? or something. I oh. don't know. But I used to use all my plastic bags. See, when I go to the store, I get, you know, eight bags worth of shit. And I'm the kind of person who, when I put my groceries in my car, I come home, I will not make trips. It's one or none. And so I hang all the plastic bags yeah. off my fingers, cut off all the circulation. Painfully cutting and, off the circulation yeah. the tips of your fingers. But yeah. I get them all in one trip. I come yeah. up. I go in there today, and of course, I didn't bring any of my little reusable bags, because who the fuck is like, oh, yes, my reusable bags. I'm going to go to the grocery store. Uh, I went there. I was like, oh, there aren't any bags. Fuck this. I forgot it. And then they had these paper bags. I'm like, all right. And I start putting all my shit in the paper bags. Then at the little self-checkout thing, it's like, how many paper bags would you like to purchase? I'm like, to oh, purchase paper bags. Yeah, that's right. So I had to get several. I only had three bags, and I had so much trouble just carrying them out to my car. Yeah. And it, ugh, these are the kind of stupid little, like, quality of life things that government fucks with. And it's this, it's a huge deal. I, I We won't even get into the faulty science and how plastic bags or banning plastic bags does anything to help anybody because now I'm actually buying plastic bags to use as garbage liners and things. I use plastic bags. I would reuse the grocery plastic bags for all sorts of shit. Now I have to buy plastic bags instead of just getting them for free. Well, I think, yeah, usually when I got all those plastic bags, I, they went to some use eventually. I didn't just throw them away. Yeah, they, go, they went in the cupboard. I would use them. I clean up my gerbil's cage with yes. them. Yes. I put them in the bathroom uh, waste basket. Yeah. Uh, I use them to package things if I'm ever sending anything that's delicate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. those bags always got used. Yeah. Yeah, they're always picking up dog Reduce, shit with those reuse, bags. Reuse, recycle. Yeah, and yeah. what about people picking up their dog shit? Now they're going to have to buy dog shit bags. So it's actually worse because you're producing more bags. I don't know. Well, people are still going to use bags. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but the whole point was to so you get like some cloth bag and always have it with you, right? Yeah, and of course I'm gonna what I'm gonna strap those to my thigh or something and have them. I don't know. Well, I've noticed I I went just on the spur of the moment to the grocery store like last week or the week before and mm -hmm. I bought something and they charged me and then they were like, "Oh, did you not have a bag with you?" And I was like, "No, I didn't show up at the grocery store with a bag." They're like. Uh, and she was like really worried because the transaction had been completed, so she couldn't charge me five cents for the bag. Right. So she's like, uh, 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 and she found the smaller bag. She's like, I can give you this bag. Oh, so wait a minute. So you took one of the cloth ones, and she didn't charge you for the cloth no, one? No, I didn't. I didn't have any bags. Oh. And she rung up my order and then put them on the side and was like, where's your bag? And I was like, oh, I don't have a bag. Okay. And then she was very worried because I didn't know if we were going to have to do another credit card transaction for five <laughs> cents for a paper bag. So she put in this little tiny bag yeah. that was like something you put a liquor bottle in or something and right. then like gave it to me, and it was really awkward. And I was 
just walking around with it with two hands. Yeah, it's <laughs> annoying. It's uh, balancing the supposed benefits against the obnoxious bullshit. It's is it worth it? I don't think so. And it makes people feel good, I guess. But fuck all that shit. Madness. It's all masturbation. It's ridiculous. It's, but it makes people feel better. Yeah, fuck. That's that. what we're here for. <laughs> They wander the streets, scavenging for loose change and discarded cigarette butts. Fair a dollar? And give me a motherfucking cigarette. Uh, I ran out of gas ways back. I got me You smoke weed, don't you? Good. I could use some change. They may be mentally unstable and deserving of our charity, but that doesn't mean they can't be selected as... The Warren and Bradley Show, Street Freak of the Week! Street Freak of the Week, take two. <laughs> we just had some uh, technical problems. We did a Street Freak of the Week uh, yeah. segment. So now we're going to try to recreate the excellent segment we yes. just recorded. We were blathering record. on for a good like, 10, 15 minutes. And, and then, then turn and face the computer yeah. screen and notice that nothing had recorded. Uh, we need an engineer. Oh, okay. a lot of spare here in this room. Here goes. As I said previously, yeah. and which you will not hear yeah. because it did not record. I'm the only one that will know what yes. you said. Yeah. Uh, I did not have an actual like larger than life street freak personality this week. There yes. were just several little interactions. Warren, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, there are just several little interactions that maybe taken together can equal mm-hmm. one street freak. Maybe not. But uh, it was mostly just there were some aggressive homeless people who were trying to beg things from me and just not going about it in a very good way. Mm -hmm. I was walking up to meet you at the bar last night, and there was a homeless man sitting in an alcove wearing a maternity dress, or kind of like one of those shirt dresses. Yeah. And it said baby on board across his belly. And he was rotund, and so I was trying to one. I was figuring out like, was he wearing this because it fit over his distended belly, or was he just accidentally wearing it? Well, do you think his belly was so distended that like a normal shirt would have been awkward for him to wear? It probably would have ridden up quite a bit because this one actually has like the darting on the side to fit yeah. the belly in there properly, nice and snug. I don't know. It fit him well, other than the boob part. He did have tits, but they didn't quite fill it but, out. I mean, he was way. comfortable because it, it covered his belly, yeah. but it it gave him enough space to move. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I would go with it. You know, it's like men who should wear bras. Like, why yeah. not? Why not just get a bra? I imagine, yeah, it must be like, does it hurt to have your like, man boobs? I would like, be like flapping around dangling all Dangling around place. and stuff. Probably get like, s- like a rash underneath. I was thinking of getting a jock strap the other day. Really? Because when I'm working, oh my God, it's wanging around all over the place. It's really irritating. We should do it. Yeah, maybe I will. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I, I, I mean... <laughs> If it's making you uncomfortable, you know. It is. Yeah, it's always in the way. It's always in the way, and it's probably going to, like, if something happens, it'll probably protect you in a little bit, too. something. Yeah, Yeah. it'll it'll keep you safe. (laughs) So anyway, I was just walking by the maturity dress guy and did not look at him. Yeah. Did not acknowledge him in any way. Maybe this is why it made him angry. But I walked by, and he went, hey, don't judge me because I'm sitting here. Oh, not judging you. Just walking by. Mm -hmm. Wasn't, Wasn't even looking at you. And then proceeded to ask me for money and cigarettes. Not the way you're supposed to do After things. being very confrontational and yeah. for no reason. So, of course, I didn't give him any, and he just screamed at me as I was walking away. Then I came across another little group who were sitting on a bench, and one of the guys tried to do the, like, Hey, what's going on? I'm like, hey, how you doing? Hey, can I have one of those cigarettes? Like, sorry, man. Sorry for what? Did you won't give me a fucking cigarette? Yes. Yes. That's what I'm sorry That's for. what I'm sorry about. <laughs> and just started walking away. And again, he started screaming things after me on the street. And it's always that kind of thing where I don't like them getting the last word. But oh, geez. <laughs> it's not as though I'm going to be able to come to any sort of conclusion no. with them. So I might as well just let them scream things at my back. But it's annoying. I, I shouldn't care at all. But all his little buddies were like, <laughs> as he was yelling, you know, slander. So you're feeling towards like peer me. pressure at this point. It's almost like I need to I, I need to look good in their eyes no, you don't. compared you don't. to their little friend. This is your issue with all these yeah, homeless people. It's ridiculous. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't. No. You're, in a sense, <laughs> supposed to be an adult about things like that, yeah, right? Yeah. And if they're acting petty, you're not supposed to, like, go down to their level yeah, well, and respond. I, yeah. I shouldn't care. And I don't really care. But it it's the kind of thing where if some douchebag at a bar is like, hey, fuck you, motherfucker, and they start trying to fuck with you, and I almost feel like, even though it shouldn't matter at all because they're a dick and a dipshit, yeah. I still don't want them to think that they got one over on me kind of thing. Oh, I, like, I think they didn't should, intimidate me. We should probably let that one go, too, but that's different in the sense that, like... They're part of what, the same culture as me. Well, or they, I mean, they're not 
mentally ill. Yeah. For one well, thing. Maybe. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in a certain sense, they probably are. But I mean, <laughs> you, you, it's not like they're like completely crazy. Mm. Uh, so it's like to go back and try to reason with the crazy person or like, you know, yeah. rectify the situation with the crazy person. Where are you going to get yourself? Mm-hmm. Nowhere. You're just bringing yourself down to the crazy person's level of craziness. Yeah, I just I just let it go. But I think I had an interaction with this homeless man right after you walked past him. Yes, yes. You mentioned this last night. Yeah, because I was walking past him and he goes, hey, you got any money? And I was like, sorry, man, I don't have any money. And he goes, how about a million dollars? And I was like, (laughs) sorry. And he's like a half million. And I was like, "Ooh." and he goes. I'll split it with you. Wow. And I turn around and I go, you're going to split my own money with me? And he goes, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And he's like, you have a good night. And I was like, you have a good night, too. And I just walked right along. Wow. So why was he so friendly with you? I don't know. But I don't ever have these interactions with the homeless people you do, you know? What were you wearing last night? Probably the same clothes I'm wearing right now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you, you cut I, your hair and shave, though, so you don't look as homeless as you used to. No, no, no. You didn't you think I was a homeless person? I don't know. Maybe you did. I'm a larger person than you. Yeah. That can probably... that Maybe. That probably has some ramifications. And maybe I have less of a, like, vibe with them, you know? Because See, that you, makes... you, you're, like, amongst them all the time. You have this weird thing going on. I don't yeah, have any energy with them. And then I had another guy. The one positive homeless interaction I had was when I was at my local convenience store. And there was a guy in front of me buying a big 40-ounce can of some sort of malt liquor or something. <laughs> yeah. And he was trying to hoist it up onto the counter and was like... Ugh! Like his shoulder hurt, and he looked back at me and gave me a yeah, shook his head. You know how it is with yep. lifting large things of like, alcohol. Oh yeah, so he had some sort of repetitive stress injury, maybe arthritis or something from lifting these forty ounce cans yeah. to his lip and sucking them down all the time. And so, because we had had that positive interaction in his eyes, anyway, he was waiting for me as I came out. And started engaging me in conversation, just explaining all the other ailments that he was experiencing. <laughs> sure. Um, he showed he had like some knee problem where he's kind of limping around. He showed me this weird lump on his head that was kind of like oozing some sort of fluid. That's terrible. Um, and then I felt like in order to keep up with the conversation, I had to start inventing ailments oh, that I had. Of course you have to because you don't want to look bad in his eyes. No, not no. at all. And so, you know, I had to, oh, bad back, and, uh, and I told him how I had had once had my shoulder out of joint before, and so I pretended that it still hurt and was still giving me trouble, especially in the cold weather. <laughs> now you're pretending. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, anyway, what does he know? Uh, but it was good, because we there was some sort of, like, peer kind of thing going on there. Like, yeah. We're both, he's like, Two oh, humans. I'm, I'm not just, 20 anymore. I'm no, like, yeah, he's certainly yeah, not. I hear that. Yeah, I don't know. Neither are you. <laughs> no. Well, barely. well, I'm glad you had this bonding experience. But for, as far as the street for you of the week, I'm going to go with the maternity clothes. Maternity clothes okay. guy. Yeah. And I apologize again for not having anyone particularly insane and crazy. I mean, they were all crazy, <laughs> but there was nobody that was just like... Nobody that went over the top. A flashing meteor yeah, yeah, yeah. of homelessness. But, you know, we'll give it to the maternity guy. Maybe I'll have more interactions with him. So, congratulations, Mr. Maternity Clothes Wearing Homeless Man. You've been selected as the Warren and Bradley Show Street Freak. Congratulations, week. my friend. Our hats are off to you, Mr. Homeless Man, because you've been selected as the Warren and Bradley Show Street Freak of the Week. And we're back on the Warren and Bradley Show. It's 3.29 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon. Is it really? Yes, it is. Currently still 66 degrees out there. Uh, I have a couple announcements before we get into the Celebrity Minute segment of our show. We have a few new places for you to actually access and download and listen to the show. (laughs) It's such a problem to get the show. (laughs) Well, it's actually pretty easy. But if you have a Windows phone or you use the Zune Marketplace, we are now available in the Zune Podcast Directory. So if Um, you're one of the five people who has one of those. Well, the Zune Marketplace is also for all the Windows phones, Windows Phone 7, Windows Windows Phone 8, which is coming out as well. And also the Xbox Live marketplace uses Zoom video and audio stuff. So it's not just the old well, if obsolete you have a Zoom, Zoom too. player. Well, nobody has one of those. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I believe a uh, fan of the show, Caitlin, has one of those. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, a classic. Looks like a big old box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, if you have a BlackBerry phone... We are available on the BlackBerry podcast directory now, uh, and then <laughs> so, and if you like have a tape player, yeah. we'll send you a cassette. Yes, because all the obsolete or technology or things that are going to be obsolete very soon, we're getting on all those. I don't things. think there's any physical way for me to actually make a tape of this show. I don't have a tape player. Well, you just have to get a uh, like, tape recorder and like play it into the like microphone We'll part. start releasing limited edition records as well, if you guys want to hear it on vinyl. <laughs> um, but our, our other partner now is Stitcher. Oh, yeah. S- Stitcher Smart Radio. Now, Warren, I know you're on the go a lot. I know you like to have your entertainment right at your fingertips at all times. 
Have you, have you used the Stitcher app? Yeah, I think I had it once. Oh, yeah? Briefly. But you got rid of it because you hated it? <laughs> I just don't think I had any use for it. But I, that's because... It's like you can play radio, like stream things over your phone, right? Right. And I don't have a phone, so... Oh, that's right. Okay, so you yeah. actually have a data connection to get it. No, but if I was in a Wi-Fi area and I had my Stitcher going, I could, like, listen to okay, it. Okay, and if you weren't a Neanderthal like Warren and actually had a phone, you could get the Stitcher app, and you can stream radio shows, you can stream podcasts, you can make your own channels with your favorite shows. If you have a podcast you like, it'll actually always have the latest episode. It'll pick up right where you left off whenever you want to listen. You can now hear our shows while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio on demand news talk and more on your mobile phone the latest episode is always available for you no syncing needed and no memory or storage wasted available on your iphone ipad android phone and beyond downloading is easy go to stitcher.com or check out your app store yeah, bless me thank you for that one <laughs> stitcher smart radio the smarter way to listen to radio um and if you have a, like a real to real player we can maybe get one of those set yeah. up for you, too. We can mail you a giant box with two reels, and you can listen on there. Morse code, <laughs> telegraph. We're trying, maybe, to, we're trying to saturate every we market We could train possible. some like subordinates to take the show on the road and do it yeah. at like, theaters in the small towns I would towns love to see a actual live performance of some of our best Just like episodes. there's a script, and then people yeah. like recreate the show. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> so now let's get into Celebrity Minute on the Warren and Bradley Show. Celebrity Minute on the Warren and Bradley Show. All right, then. Our first story is an update on the Robert Pattinson, Kristen Stewart debacle. Debacle? Debacle. 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 Robert Pattinson is starting to make appearances now to promote the newest Twilight film, and so several people have asked him about the uh, Kristen yeah. Stewart situation and have been urging him to kick her to the curb. In fact, John Stewart actually said, quote, that he should kick her to the curb. To him? To his face? Yeah, <laughs> when he was on the show. Um, well, this, is, this is awkward, isn't it? Yeah. To actually have a actual relationship and then go on like John Stewart's show right. and have him give you advice your friend, about it. your friends are supposed to do that. It's supposed to be like, yeah, you should get rid of that bitch. But John Stewart is doing it. Well, it's even um, hard for your friends to do that, really, because you're in that situation where you're sort of like, ugh. But to have like journalists saying this to you is well, weird. Well, according to Us Weekly, his friends Sienna Miller and Tom Sturridge have been begging Rob to end it for good. <laughs> they think Sienna she will Miller. hurt him again. <laughs> Just like Reese Witherspoon. Uh, 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 good for him. Um, but he was also on Good Morning America and George Stephanopoulos was hinting around that he should dump her. It's like getting all this relationship advice from talk show hosts. It's kind of Stephanopoulos. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, now, oh, she's back. No, oh, yeah. Our one woman demolition derby, Amanda Bynes, is being investigated for another traffic accident. <laughs> How many is this now? I, it's got to be at There's least several, three, right? Several drunk driving things, yeah. several like fender bender collisions. On this one, Los Angeles police are investigating a minor traffic accident involving actress Amanda Bynes after a person reported the actress left without providing her information. Lieutenant Andy Neiman said Sunday the 26-year-old actress stopped after the accident and looked at the other vehicle and determined there wasn't any damage. Oh, she's an expert. And then she drove away. No one was injured, and the damage to the other person's vehicle actually was more than $800. I don't know why she still has a driver's license. Yeah, it seems like that should be taken away at some point. And then we can start getting the situation where she's driving a suspended license, she gets in yeah. more trouble, and then it starts spiraling out of control, and eventually she's in prison. So we'll look forward to that. Well, that's what we had determined was going to happen yeah. last time we talked about oh, her. Yeah, right? yeah, she's on her way. Yeah, she's always drunk, she's always hitting things. She's going to run over a person at some point. Oh, God. Remember when that like uh, publicist woman years ago did that and ran over someone in her SUV? No. Oh, yeah, it was this whole controversy. <laughs> and she, didn't, she had just sustained for normal people and just rode right over the car like she didn't care. <laughs> Well, I think we've established that most celebrities have a disdain for normal people. And so. why wouldn't you? They they make crappy movies and people go watch them. Speaking of which, Lady Gaga's bodyguard kicked a guy to the curb. This is an interesting video. We'll put this online uh, on our website. Oh, I haven't seen this yet. So this will be interesting because yes. I will now determine if the bodyguard was in the right. Okay. Warren, you be the arbiter of this. Right. It was uh, as Lady Gaga was departing her hotel in Bucharest, Romania. A fan who was very eager to get an autograph approached her. And sure. this is what happened. We'll play it here. You won't be able to see it, obviously. But go to our website, warrenandbradley.com, and check it out. That's not Gaga. No, that's not. I was like wondering that was. Oh, that was, yeah. That's a, <laughs> quite the outfit. Yeah. I'm not keeping a low profile. 
Um, so we you know see... what? That's what a body guard is supposed to do. Yeah, I to set the stage for people, if, if you don't have access to the interwebs, I don't know how you're listening to this show, but if you <laughs> can't... Tape. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. If you can't watch the video or you don't have it in front of you right now, Gaga is leaving a hotel. There's a bunch of paparazzi and fans waiting outside, and one eager, middle-aged autograph hound, yeah, fat a, dude... a man. ...rushes at her very aggressively. He's obviously holding out a notepad and a pen, but... He rushes at her in a yeah. really aggressive manner. And, of course, the bodyguards just reacted and threw him down Stops to the ground. Him. She kind of went, oh. But, yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Especially if you're in Romania. Yeah. They have to protect her. That's right. what those guys are employed to do. Right. You can't just go charging at somebody with something in your hand. He doesn't know what it is. It, it could have been a little, like, cyanide capsule. It could have been a cyanide capsule. It could have been a pen knife. Somewhere. It could have been anything. Yeah. So the bodyguards stopped the guy, put him down. The guy is fine. He didn't, like, break any bones, it didn't look no. like. So, I mean, that's, what's supposed, that's what happens. Do not charge at celebrities. So, Warren and Bradley's judgment? Bodyguard is excellent. And when we become big stars, we're yes. going to bring him in. We're going to hire him for up. us. All right. Next story. Shia LaBeouf to film real sex scenes in new movie, The Nymphomaniac. Oh, my God. I, I don't know about you, Warren, but I am sick to death of this person. I have no idea why he is a So star. he's in a movie about Nymphomaniac? Because I saw something on the internet, just like a little headline that said something about Shia LaBeouf as a Nymphomaniac. And it was, I think he is. Oh, he is? Life. Okay. Yeah. I, but it was so <laughs> of so little interest to me that I just like didn't yeah. even bother to click on it. Well, this is going to be a new film by Lars von Trier. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Talk about putting two people who probably think they have a lot of talent yeah. who don't have any. Yes. Um, in a quote from LeBeouf on MTV News, he says, The movie is exactly what you think it is. For instance, there's a disclaimer at the top of the script that basically says we're doing it for real. Everything that is illegal will shoot in blurred images. Other than that, everything is happening. Out of the former Disney Channel star of his willingness to do the controversial role, Von Trier is very dangerous. He's the most dangerous dude that I've ever showed up for. Showed up for. Shown yeah. up for there, LeBeouf. I'm terrified. I'm so terrified, which is why I have to go. We'll see what happens. So apparently he's going to be having actual sex in the film. They're not going to show Mr. Penis entering Miss Vagina, I and don't this think. And this is an uh, age-old technique of Lars von Trier to actually just do something shocking. Yeah, drum up a lot of drum controversy. Up a lot, and then people will have to go to see the movie and not actually make a movie that's any good. He so did, uh, good for him. He did the 2011 drama Melancholia with Alexander Skarsgård and Kirsten Dunst, which I have not seen. I heard it was not good. <laughs> Um, anyway, for good. they both need to go away. Shia LaBeouf, go away. Von Trier, go away. And I'll be much more happy. Oh. Rihanna gave an interview recently to Oprah on her own network where she uh, gets a little emotional about the Chris Brown situation. We'll play the audio for you right now. Ooh. I lost my best friend. Like Everything I knew switched. Switched in a night. And I couldn't control that. So... I had to deal with that, and that's not and that's not easy for me to understand or interpret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, and it's not easy to interpret on camera, mm -hmm. not with the world watching. Watch mm -hmm. I felt like the only person they hate right now is him. It was a very confusing <laughs> space to be in. He was angry as I was. Oprah looks angry on sympathetically. And betrayed. I just felt like he made that mistake because he needed help, and like. Who's going to help him? Hmm. Nobody's going to say he needs help. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to say he's he's a monster. Yeah. That and sounds like a battered woman to me, doesn't source. it? Yeah. I was more concerned about him. Okay. Maybe he does need help. Obviously, oh, I'm sure he's he does. got if some you, emotional problems. If you're, problems. like, viciously beating women in your car, you, uh, you have a problem. It drives me insane that he still has a career. I cannot believe he beat the shit out of her. This wasn't just like, eh, slap a bitch bullshit, which of course I don't condone either. But he pummeled her repeatedly with a balled up fist in her face. This is just the culture we have now. You it, realize that doing anything, no matter how bad it is, just makes you a bigger celebrity. Well, it depends on who you are. If, if you're a political figure, if you're a talk show host or something, and you make some sort of gaffe, that can end your career. But if you're a pop star, apparently you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can beat a woman bloody, and you're fine. 
I just can't believe it. And I, I remember when it happened, there was Twitter posts from idiot female fans like, he could beat me up any time. Like, all right, you deserve to get the shit kicked out of you, then, you <laughs> idiot. It's just so irritating to me that people give this fucker a pass. And her, obviously, she's completely fucked up emotionally about this. And the idea that she is still working with him professionally and they still see each other. I find very sad and disturbing. It's just ugh. somebody needs to kick the shit out of him. Oh, Maybe well, I'll you know about the confrontation about that happened, right? Oh, with Drake. Drake and Tony Parker was there, point guard of the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Really? They're throwing bottles around. Yeah, I heard he about got some that. glass in his eye. Yeah, wasn't didn't play in the Olympics for France. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the real cost of domestic violence right there. Also, she's from Barbados. I'd never heard her speak before. Yeah. And she definitely has like the Caribbean bit. accent, doesn't she? Bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. She's, uh, by all accounts, fairly intelligent. So hopefully she'll figure out that he's a dick and not have anything else to do with him ever again i just I, that's the one thing to me there's certain things certain ways you can act out you can be emotionally disturbed have some sort of problems and you fuck up and i'm willing to give you the benefit of the, the benefit of the doubt but when you get to the point where you beat a woman you got a major problem well it's yeah well that's just like the, the thing you're not supposed to do ever for any reason you should be a pariah for the rest of your life once you do that yeah, or at least for uh, like a couple of months. Yeah, <laughs> not just become like uh, not so long afterwards, just releasing more records that are even right. more popular than the ones you're releasing before. Yeah. It doesn't seem like quite the uh, adequate punishment for yeah, that. Yeah, what kind of what kind of fallout did he ever receive from that? He got a little bit of bad press, and now he's ju- he's fine. Yeah, and she's fine with him. Apparently, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I think when it happened, uh, the reaction was sort of like, "Wow, that's it for his career." Because I think we were still looking at it from a framework of years ago, where or like from logic. From logic or just or like morality, the morality or just like some sort of level of civility be like, well, you can't do that. But apparently not. Apparently you can just do anything. And well, I'm just going to take the opportunity right now to say, fuck you, Chris Brown. Ooh, oh, you, you want to step up to me? Huh? Huh? Uh, Why don't you try picking on somebody your own set? Chris Brown. Uh, you come up to Bellingham. You head straight to Bumtown. Yep. You know where to find him. <laughs> Uh, I think I could kick his ass. I don't know. I, you don't know. Maybe he has some martial arts training. I don't know. If, as long as he doesn't bring his entourage with him. But he always has his entourage with him. Okay, Chris Brown, it's not going to be you and all your giant 350-pound bodyguards. It's going to be yeah. you and me. Or Drake can come and back you up. Yeah, but then he'd have to have a second as well. Oh, this is getting really complicated. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this has been Celebrity Minute on The Warren and Bradley Show. This has been Celebrity Minute on The Warren and Bradley Show. All right, so as I was saying earlier, my uh, demeanor has improved. I've been in a little bit more of a better mood, not as cynical about people, able to enjoy their foibles a little more, but... In spite of my best efforts, I still had the crazy homeless people yelling at me. And then I also had a nice interaction the other day. I was driving with my brother because he was giving me rides to work because I didn't have a car. And, uh, you know, I was smoking in his vehicle. And as most people do when they're smoking a cigarette in a car, they flick the ash out the window. Yeah. You don't throw the cigarette out the window. No. Well, at least not if there's a cop behind you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you flick the ash. And when you flick ash out of a window, maybe two or three little flakes of ash fall to the ground, and they pretty much disappear and disintegrate. It's not not a major littering problem. It's not. It's not something you hear about in, like, public service announcements, being people being like, use your ashtray, don't put the ash outside. Right. They're mostly worried about the butts just being disposed of. The butts and then maybe causing fires or things like that. Yeah, causing fires. And the butts, because they don't break down very quickly, so they end up being around for a while. But I could flick ash onto a bucket of gasoline and it wouldn't light. There's nothing burning there. There's nothing burning and it's just ash that just disappears. So anyway, I wasn't doing anything wrong. No. I was just minding my own business. Suddenly, a morbidly obese woman in an SUV pulls up alongside us at a light and goes, Use a fucking ashtray! And screams it at me. (laughs) And then I'm like, oh! And then she goes, ah! And peels out and, like, peels in front of us. Whoa! And, like, dodges through the other other traffic. Oh, this is an angry woman. And now, of course... We could just laugh about it and be like, ha ha, what an yeah, idiot. Let it go. But I, I can't let yeah, that go. That's ridiculous. Go. No. So I'm egging my brother on to get up behind her. And so we go in this like high speed chase through the streets of Ferndale, the city to the north. What, um, what is the point of this? What's, how is this going to end? Because I wanted to yell at her. And so we finally get up behind her. 
I can't tell if she can see me in her rearview mirror or not. I'm pretty sure she's probably aware of the fact that we were like trying to get behind her. And so I did the most blatant ugh, flipping off I could possibly do where I was like lean my whole body out the window and was like waving until I saw that she looked out the rearview mirror. And then I gave her the like, oh, cross swords, crazy yeah. flip off. And then again, waved at her and then like, oh, just flipping her oh, off. Yeah, with you want to make sure she knew. And she went ah! and peeled away and just like drove like a crazy person, almost ran a red light. And my initial thought, first of all, was why the fuck was she so pissed off? Um, and second, why would a morbidly obese middle-aged woman start yelling things to two men who are obviously construction workers in a Jeep, two strapping young lads? One strapping, one sickly looking. Well, one. maybe. <laughs> if you were a fat middle-aged woman and you saw me in my construction gear with my brother in his construction gear and we were driving around in a Jeep Cherokee, would you yell things at us out of your car? <laughs> no, I don't yell at anyone, though. Well, so, just put yourself in that mindset, though. It's, no, You're but, bitter and angry. You've popped out a couple kids. Your husband's an asshole. But you should pick your battles. You should yell at people who aren't going to conceivably, you know... Attack you? Well, we weren't going to attack her. I just talked about how violence against women is inappropriate, but yelling but, at women but, is but this is the fine. thing. It's the, the smokers are the target, though, now, right? Well, yeah. They're the new, you know, black men or Irishman. You know what I mean? It goes back for years. There's always some target that you're allowed to pick on. Yeah. And now it's smokers and you're allowed to just be disrespectful and mean to them and scream at them from your car. Yeah. You know, why not? You, you, there's segregated facilities. It's like Jim Crow, but for smokers, right? It's like, get away from this door. You have your own special little area where you can be, you can't be mixed with the other people because you smell bad. Overcome. And it's all sanctioned by the government. So she felt like justified in yelling anything at you. But I can understand. To. I mean, I, I still think it's ridiculous if people are like, oh, oh my God, if you're smoking. Yeah. But I can sort of understand, okay, they're smelling the smoke. And apparently that's become the worst thing in the world that anyone yeah. can ever be subjected to. But what fucking harm or what problem is caused by a little bit of ash being flicked onto the street. Well, you're a smoker. Yeah, I guess. So you think it was just the fact that I'm a smoker she had to yell at me. But There's, does she do this to every person she sees smoking? I think there are people that do that. Yeah. They're just so angry that you're, like, violating the world by doing that, and so they just yell at people about it. You are right, though. It, it is the one group that you're allowed to just be completely disrespectful to. You can you can just swear at them. You can yell at them. You can completely degrade them, and it's fine. It's completely sanctioned by the government. It's sanctioned by society. I'll have people come go out of their way to walk up to me while I'm completely separated from everyone, because I do try to be considerate, knowing that people are going to get freaked out. I'll go step quite a ways away from any group yeah. of people and light up a cigarette. And people will go out of their way to come up to me and complain about me smoking, even though where they were previously, they couldn't smell the smoke. It wasn't bothering them at all. I don't go up to morbidly obese middle-aged women in SUVs and bitch at them about the Eating heart attack they're about yeah. to have, you know? I don't feel justified in doing that, but they feel completely justified in bitching at me. The other thing that was sort of disturbing that happened oh, this week, good. as I mentioned, uh, I think on last week's episode, I've started playing the popular game Minecraft. Oh, um, yes. As usual, I'm like two years behind everything. Yeah. There's something that will become this like huge internet meme or some viral video or something. And You're I don't... the Midwest of Bellingham maybe. here. Thanks I don't hear about it for a wait. while, and yeah. then I find out, and I'm like, hey, everybody. I'm like, oh, that was like two months ago, you idiot. I'm like, oh. Yeah. But anyway, I got, I've gotten into Minecraft, and I've been sculpting castles and mining and building and smelling melting ores and things like that. I can very easily get obsessed with weird shit like that. I used to play the Sims computer game and would just yes. make houses for hours and hours at a time. It's make very productive. It. Yeah. yeah. It uh, that's a creative outlet. And anyway, I was uh, late, late one night building my castle. I was trying to get the little towers in the corner perfect. No, sure. I was in a precarious position, and I just mined a lot of cobblestone. And I don't want to get into the... I mean, it's obviously very complicated to mine cobblestone in a video game. Yes. You know? And uh, I had smelted much of it into smooth stone. And I was using this to face the outside of my tower. <laughs> sure. When, lo and behold, IT guy John uh -oh. enters my game. Yeah. Because you, it's, it's on Xbox Live. You can enter into your friend's game and go into their world and check things out. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, IT Guy John. The listeners know IT Guy John is the hardworking, ever on the ball information technologies master of the Warren and Bradley show. Yes. If we ever have any problems with the website, he's right there on the ball. But this time, I tried to send him a chat request. It's like, okay, let's let's chat. You can yeah. come come into my game. He refused the chat request. Oh my! It's like, what's going on? What's going on with IT Guy John? I'm like, okay, I don't know what he's doing. He's running around in my world. He could be stealing my resources. He could be, like, destroying, killing my cows, yeah. riding my pigs, molesting my sheep. I have no idea what's going yeah. on. But I'm like, okay, it's IT Guy John. 
What's well, the worst that could happen? It, there's no ill will between no, you and IT guy, no, John. Not that I know of. No, well. Or at least not as far as I knew. Yeah. So I just continue building my tower. Yeah. And I'm out on this precarious ledge, and my castle is built on a high mountain. Oh, yeah. Prime real estate in the game. And uh, lo and behold, IT guy John comes up behind me. He has a sword, so obviously he had stolen some of my iron from my world and smelted himself a sword. Comes up behind and just kills me. Kills me dead. Huh. I fall to the ground. My inventory goes everywhere. And so then I'm faced with a dilemma. If I reload my game or respawn, I could lose all my inventory because it was scattered to the high winds. Yeah. But if I don't respawn, I will lose all the progress I've made on my castle. Hours of backbreaking, <laughs> painstaking work. So I just had to turn off the game. Lust all the progress I've made on my castle. And uh, did you talk to IT John I, about I this? I tried to text IT guy John. He would not respond. Hmm, interesting. Is there some sort of... Uh, he's turned into like a, a an online menace. I don't know what's going on. Well, he's a cyber bully. Maybe apparently. he is. He's bullying me. I read about this in Time Magazine. Yeah. He's one of them cyber bullies. Yeah. And I don't like it. And just like that... You're going to drive me to suicide. It's, well, well, it's like the, the cheerleaders, right, in Texas. Didn't yeah. they, they cyber bully that yeah. girl into killing herself? No, it's like the guy, the uh, gay guy that jumped off the bridge. Oh, that's right. The guy in New Jersey. Yeah. It's just like that. He's going to take video of me playing Minecraft and put it on the internet, and then I'm going to get so upset that I'm going to jump off a bridge and kill myself. Um, or just jump out of your window and die in the streets of Bumtown. That's perhaps possible. Um, I hope that doesn't happen, but you know what? It's it's <laughs> just about there right now. No, this is not characteristic of IT Guy John. I'd like to see IT Guy, guy, IT guy John respond to this. Well, if you think about it, he probably thought it was hilarious. And if you think about it, it actually is, I guess. Because there's a... Um, That's what you're doing is absurd. I'm not 14 years old. No, But no. I'm sitting there for hours making a castle, and he came and killed well, me. Well, the strange part is the fact that you uh, labor away all day building things, and then come home and turn on a video game and start building doing things. manual labor <laughs> on a video game. Yeah. It's weird. That is kind of weird. Well, if IT Guy John is listening, and I know he probably is, what the fuck? We need a response to Jesus this. Jesus Christ, right into podcast He's, at com. I don't want to see this just become the Warren show next week. No, I know. Because it's difficult because I don't know how to work the computer. Well, this could escalate into a huge feud. Then it definitely will be on tape because that'll be the only way I know how to record the show. <laughs> you with one of those Fisher Price things yes, with the exactly. microphone. <laughs> so I've always been obsessed with the idea of uh, our close cousins, the Neanderthal. Oh, yeah. I, I say Neanderthal because that's the pretentious way of saying it. Yeah, I, th I think that's like the way you're... Niger, Niger, yeah. and stuff you're supposed like that. to say Neanderthal. I think. Well, you're not supposed to say anything. It just depends yeah. on what is used well, by people. Whenever I watch a nature show and there's some German guy talking about them, he goes, "Yes, not Neanderthal," and so that's what I say. Well, that's fine. But anyway, I've always been obsessed about what happened to them. Did they interbreed with humans? Because that's that was one of the theories is that they had done the Neanderthal genome. This is going to get very technical and interesting for everyone <laughs> yeah, listening. Sure. And apparently, we share. Europeans and Asians share between 1% and 4% of our DNA. I've heard this too, yeah. And so the theory was that humans didn't just slaughter all the Neanderthals, modern humans, that they might have interbred with them yeah. and just bred them out of existence. But now a recent study has come out from, I believe, the University of Cambridge, which says that basically they think that any shared DNA that um, Europeans or Asians have with Neanderthal was just a result of our shared ancestor. So basically they're saying that it doesn't look like hybridization occurred, but they can't prove conclusively that it didn't occur. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, I've always thought, okay, we don't know exactly what they look like, but we do know they were shorter. Yeah. They were more robust. They had uh, heavy brow ridges. They probably weren't hairy all over. We're not sure, but they probably weren't. But, you know, if you saw a Neanderthal guy walking around, I think you would know that it wasn't... Oh, yeah, you'd know. There was wasn't something human. wrong with them. So imagine, more, and it's 40,000 years ago. Yeah, let's go back in the Wayback <laughs> Machine. <laughs> You're in a group of hunter-gatherers living in, uh, let's say, near Gibraltar. Oh. And that was one of the last vestiges of where the Neanderthals were still alive in yeah. Europe. And you're hunting around. You've got more uh, sophisticated technology. You have spear throwers. Uh, you haven't developed the bow and arrow yet. But, you know, you're, con you're taking down large game. You're working together. Oh, yeah, all these things. And you come across a band of Neanderthals. Hmm. And, uh, Yum. you know, in your group, the women have all gotten some disease and died or something. And you notice these Neanderthal women. Eh, they're kind of lumpy, kind of short, kind of humpy. Uh, maybe some unibrows going on there. Yeah. Maybe a little mustache. But are you they thinking, are females. Are you thinking they look pretty good? Are you thinking, uh, 
I mean, where do you, where is your mentality at at that point in, in history? Are you like, would you even think that they weren't human? Because I think people are really good at, at citing difference. Yeah. You know? I think just instinctually you would see these Neanderthals walking around and you would know, okay, that is not me. That being but said, still, though, would you still tap that ass? That's what I'm trying to ask. Um, that sex drive is pretty powerful, and especially yeah. if you're a primitive man yeah. and you haven't been around any females. Yeah. You see a Neanderthal <laughs> female. Hello. Exactly. But you're like, hey, <laughs> that's my only option right now. So that's Let's what see, I would go for it. We've discussed this before where if we were in prison... Oh, your only option is to have anal sex with other prisoners? Yeah. And I would not go for that option. I would just not have sex. But this is the thing. You're a modern human. Yeah. You're not thinking in the same way I am back here 40,000 years ago. They're modern humans, evolutionarily. This is the thing. If I did have intercourse with this Neanderthal woman, (laughs) Mm -hmm. would it be able to produce offspring? That's what they, they think probably they could. But who knows if it this would be... Thing. I think if it, if it could have happened, it was happening. Really? So I feel like that... Well, the only thing... I'm sure the Neanderthal males would be like, you know, try to fight me off. But I... You know, of course, I have better technology. I'd just be like, get out of my way. You know what I mean? I don't know. They're pretty... They're buff. They're, they're buff, but it's like, I'm using my brain. Yeah. And they're using their brawn. And I'm, my brain's going to... Well, actually, their the brains were bigger than ours. Yeah, but mine's better. Yeah. I, th- apparently, they had more, like, instinctual racial memory than we did. Yeah, they got that stuff. But I, I mean, I've got this these graves. But they said they, they even iPod, had, they had uh, graves, they had burial ceremonies and things like that. Oh, they, well, la-dee-da. That's uh, right. As I'm like <laughs> killing them with my advanced spear, I'm going to be yeah. like, that's a nice grave you made. Wow. I'm really impressed. Now I'm going to have sex with your woman. <laughs> <laughs> so you would, you would tap that ass. Probably. I imagine so. It's also true that there could have been some stigma around it, right? I don't know. See, it could have been like a, an incest type stigma around having sex with Neanderthal. If women. I were in charge of our group of hunter gatherers and the young men were out and they had captured some Neanderthal women and brought them back to camp, I I would not put my seal of approval on them for No, you wouldn't, but the women. other thing is like you would probably be out looking for women though, right? Yeah. And let's say it was going on for a long time. And you're leading this tribe and the men are like, "Buddy, <laughs> come on now. We have got to spread our seed here." And right. you're like, "I'm doing everything I can." And finally you stumble upon some Neanderthal Neanderthal woman. So Harry over there is better than nothing. I'm pretty sure you're going to be like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go for it. But if the point of fornicating is to produce offspring, I don't know if those hybrid offspring would be sterile, perhaps. Because the theory is that it's like theoretically mules. possible, yeah, to even breed with chimpanzees. No, oh, come on now. People have said that it's perhaps possible if enough people <laughs> tried. I just don't think a lot of people are lining up having sex with these chimp. Well, that's another. Chicks. That's one of the science things that, like, of course, everyone's like. Wow, that is super interesting. Yeah. We should do that, but you can't. No, you're, you're not, not allowed to do, do it. Uh, not, not in the sense that you'd want to have sex with a chimp, <laughs> but in the sense that you'd want to, like, artificially... Force people to have sex yeah, with force people to have sex with a chimp and then tape it. No, you'd want to, you know, take a turkey baster and try to yeah. impregnate a chimp and then see what came out. And get this weird... Yeah. Kill me. I don't know. I think... I, I can only think of myself in terms of my own life yes. now. And I've there have been plenty of times where I've been out at a bar and looking around and all the women I see look as though they perhaps are Neanderthals and I don't want to have sex with any of them. But I'll say this to you right now. Yes. If you had been off in Gibraltar with no one around yeah. for like 10 years and not been around a woman at all and then were transported magically to this bar and saw these like maybe less than, you know, A plus women around, yeah. you would be in heaven. But to see, that's still not interspecies though. That's the thing. That's, that's, that's what worries me. <laughs> it depends. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's an interesting question because you do have to think about the fact that at that time there were so few people. You, would, you could probably go your whole life with hardly ever seeing a stranger, you know? Like but yeah, you would but be you around... Would, but there are women in your group that you would have sex with. Yeah, but I think... I mean, there must have been some sort of gathering of different groups or of they people swap out. they would Well, I'm swap sure they out. have some, like meeting right and yeah. they get together and they're like now you give me some of your grain or see whatever you got or your some bones or whatever right. you got and they like all right uh, you can have my daughter and then right. they take the daughter away and he, he goes she goes with the tribe off right. of them because they can't keep interbreeding or else they'll have mormons on your hands no no they must <laughs> they must have oh man uh they must have uh had some sort of like communication yeah. with the tribes 
<laughs> but do you think do you think the Neanderthals came to those little gatherings? Were they no? Uh, first of all, I don't I don't know if modern humans were just slaughtering every Neanderthal they saw because they're like, Ugh, look at these freaks, or if they were just kind of like leave those alone, or if maybe the Neanderthals would be like, hello, they'd come to the little gathering and the the Neanderthal women's and they're like fur halter tops and stuff. Well, the extinction the of women's, the Neanderthals women. did this happen? It happened gradually, right? Yeah, it, but it was fairly soon because they were around for a long time in Europe. And then pretty quickly after modern humans started coming out of Africa into Europe, they didn't last that much longer. I mean, so was there, there was some period there was like speaking, a war between that. They, that's what they don't know, because that's the thing. Then it wouldn't have happened if it was like suddenly they break through the Alps or something. Here's the modern humans coming through and they're like. Look at these assholes. Yeah. These unibrow motherfuckers. They're like, <laughs> take them out. We don't want any of these guys around and just kill them all as quickly as possible. Yeah, I don't know. Then I don't think there'd be any like mixing. But if right. they were like hanging out for thousands of years, sort of like around each other and stuff, well, there I must think, have been some. I think there was an on. overlap for several thousand years. It's probably like a Romeo and Juliet situation, right? <laughs> and they're like, you can't be with him. He's a human. And she's like, but I love him, daddy. And then they like wander <laughs> off, you know? I, that, those things probably happen. Well, we've all seen Clan of the Cave Bear. What? You know, with Daryl Hannah? She no. was a modern human. She got raised by Neanderthals. What? You never seen this movie? No. How was she me? modern? This is like supposed to be set thousands of years ago. Yeah, it was set during that time period. And like her parents are killed, the Neanderthals like raise her. Yeah. What the fuck? They made this into a movie. Yeah. Was there any like talking during the movie? Uh, there's grunting. <laughs> this is real. Yeah. How would I, how could anyone watch that? Why would anyone watch yeah, that? It's really bad, but yeah, huh, that's a, that's a exists. weird premise. You ever read those books? They're awful. There's books based on this. Yeah, well, the books, the movie's based on the book about a human that There's was a raised. Whole series, yeah, <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, it sounds terrible. <laughs> I prefer um, my movie where it's like we're just like we go for a hike later this Neanderthals. afternoon, and there's like Neanderthals out there, and we have to fight them for a while and fuck them. Well, maybe. There's any pretty ones. <laughs> but in the movie, she was having sex with Neanderthals the whole time. But Jim, the Neanderthals baby. were very aggressive sexually. They would just bend her over and have their way with her. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, this just shocks you that they're not, like, very couth or anything? Well, I mean, they're like... no. I mean, they might have been very friendly, Oh, happy yeah, I'm people. sure they're very civil in all the things they did. <laughs> they're just... So they're, you're, you're being specious. I just know that I'm familiar with humans i'm familiar with creatures that aren't humans and well and humans are pretty goddamn aggressive too so they're pretty aggressive but they're not nearly as aggressive as animals yeah so i imagine it's somewhere like they're much more aggressive than us so i imagine they wouldn't be like asking for daryl hannah's consent necessarily i, just I think take they were of, you know they 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 had religion i know they had their sort. graves they buried them they buried they put, people. like a stone on top they of worship it. cave bears that's oh, where the cave, cave bears that's right yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So you would have sex with Neanderthals. That's what we've established. Probably earlier, it would probably be more likely. As things went on later and they were sort of dying out, probably not. <laughs> so you got to get your Neanderthal coups while you can. Oh, well, yeah. And it's just like awkward to be like <laughs> a band of like the last few Neanderthals. Are, like, yeah, you're bringing your girlfriend like, to the fire yeah. tonight and like, ugh. God, I hope not. (laughs) (laughs) She's so aggressive, but she does bury her dead, at least. That's good. Yeah, you're a sicko. This has been the Warren and Bradley Show, brought to you by Warren Van and Bradley Victor. For podcast news and information, like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Warren and Bradley. Follow the show on Twitter at Warren and Brad. Subscribe on iTunes and leave a review. For episode archives and episode pictures, go to warrenandbradley.com. And to contact the show, write to podcast at warrenandbradley.com. Thank you.